from All About the House. You can find me on Etsy if you do a search for All About the House, no spaces. Um, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a blog image. So if we go to my blog, which is www.allaboutthehouseprintablesblog.com, um, I'm going to show you how to make this image here, which is the image that I create for all of my blog posts. Um, so I actually do this using Canva. I do have Photoshop and I do like using Photoshop but Canva is really good if you've just got a quick project or you want to just quickly make something and I do like that I don't have to try and find the file on my computer because I do have a lot of files and I don't have to wait for Photoshop to load either. So the template that I used was called Blog Graphic which is 800 pixels by 1200 pixels so if you go onto Canva, it's got all these nice pre-made templates for you already pre-sized. They've got ones for Instagram as well. And um, you can also use a landscape blog image if you want. I chose the portrait one because I found that people on Pinterest, um, because this is the image that I then pinned to Pinterest to promote um, the blog post, they seem to find the portrait better because when you're scrolling down, I guess you see more of a portrait image than um, a landscape image. So find the size that you want to use or if you want to use your own custom dimensions you can just click on custom dimensions and it will let you um, enter in the dimensions that you want. So I'm just going to use this blog graphic one. So I've actually set up a template which I use each time I've got a blog post. So if you have a look at my blog you'll notice that all of my posts have this same image and all I have to do is change the text. I don't even have to change my um, blog name or anything, I literally just update it with the title of the blog post. So I don't have to sit here and recreate this image every single time, which makes it really quick. Um, so Canva, one of the reasons that I prefer it over other uh, free image software such as PicMonkey or if you're just creating this in Photoshop is because they give you these pre-made templates which you can quickly customize. So this one's a really good one. I could do 10 ways to use planner stickers or something relating to your blog and it's a quick change. I already like the format of that. I don't have to create it myself. It's already done for me. That's a nice one. They've got lots of good ones here that you can quickly change out. That's a good one too. Um, so anyway, you can use the pre-made ones or I created my own um, template from scratch. So if you go to Elements, Shapes, to get the rounded rectangle, they've actually got these um, pre-made shapes already in here. So you could use any of these shapes if you wanted to. I chose this one. And I'm just going to left click and drag in one of the corners because I don't want it to be quite that big. And then left click and drag to reposition it. So as part of my, I guess, branding or signature um, is that I use a rainbow stripe or just a rainbow in general with the same colors um, so what I did was created a white um, this section white and added in my text for the, my blog title and then I've got my um, like signature pattern as my background so if someone's looking at my pictures on Pinterest all of my uh, blog preview images will look the same and they can look at it and know okay that is a blog post from all about the house without even having to read it because it's um, easily identifiable because I use the same thing all the time. So you can change the color. I'm going to change it to white because now I can't see that. I'm just going to um, add my background in. So I've uploaded a paper that I made or well, the pattern that I made for my business which is, if it will load, I've made a couple of things in Canva. I also like to use it. I made a preview image for um, when people subscribe to my blog in Canva. So that was another way you can use this. So this is the pattern that I created. So I can just bring this in. You can upload the file if you've got it elsewhere or you can just not even use a colored background. You could do a solid color instead of the pattern if you wanted to. And I can just left click and drag to increase the size of it. So that looks about good. So I want to make my white space a bit bigger. I can just left click and drag. Okay, so now I've got my white writing space. It looks pretty good aligned to the center. If not, you can use the arrow keys to reposition it. And one of the, I guess, bad things about Canva is that it's not easy to align things. So that's aligned to the um, center because I've got that dashed line appearing in the middle. 
but I need one coming vertically, not just horizontally, and it does not seem to want to cooperate. So I'm just going to have to eyeball it. So I'm just going to move it a bit to the right. It looks pretty good. So now I can, what I can do is create a copy of this because I want to put a black border around my um, space where I write the blog title, this black border here. So obviously I want that one to be bigger because of now the align tools are coming up because I want this to be behind it. So I've got it bigger and I send it back. So now I've got a border, but it's not quite looking even. So I'm just going to click on that layer again and just tweak the size of it a little bit. Cool, so that looks pretty even now. So now I need to do... Oh, actually, that's a little bit up the top. I'll just move it in a little bit. Sorry, guys, I'm a bit of a pe perfectionist. A little bit more. We can zoom in and see a bit better. Yeah, just a little smidge more. And a bit more down the bottom. If I was in Photoshop, I could do this really quickly, um, which is one of the downsides of using Canva. But I like that I can make heaps of different things in Canva and quickly find it. Um, I don't have to find the file in Photoshop. Okay, so now we're ready to add our text. So just go to the text menu. It comes up with all these uh, pre-made text clusters, I guess. Um, so you could use one of them if you wanted to. Or I just add a heading and then type in the name of the blog post. So if I wanted to do this one, which was how to organize recipes, just type in the title. Now I don't like that font. Um, that's not the font that I use. I choose to use the same font as came with my um, blog template, which is called Lato or Lato. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. And it does come as an option in Canva. So Canva's got all these nice fonts that you can choose from. So I always make sure that I use the same font for every blog post because, again, it makes it easy to recognize it is a post from my blog. So how to organize recipes. I'm going to make that bigger because I want that to stand out more. So I'm going to bump it up to 60. If you want to reposition the text on your canvas, just wait until you see these four arrows. And then you can move it around and that line, yeah, there we go, to a line it should appear. So now it's in the center. And I want to make sure that my text is black. So press Control A to highlight all of, your, all of your text. And then click black for the text color. Okay, so now I want to add this other little bit here plus a free printable recipe binder. So I'm going to, I've already created this text. Um, so what I'm going to do is copy it. So I don't have to find... Um, add this in, find the font, and change all again. All I have to do is just change the text. So how to organize recipes, and then I said plus a free printable recipe binder. Plus a free printable recipe binder. Now because I'm running short on space, I'm going to just reduce the size of this one a little bit. So press control A, and I'm going to bump that down to 50 and move it down a little bit because I don't want it too bunched up and hard to read. Oh, I forgot the end of the bracket. Cool. So on every one of your blog images, not only should it look easily recognizable with your brand name, you also need to include the name of your blog. So I'm going to go add heading, oh, oops, sorry, not add heading. I'm just going to make a copy of this again and reduce the size because it'll be quicker than adding it from scratch by using this add heading thing again. So it is from my blog, which is all about the house. And I'm just going to reduce that. Because obviously I want them to know where to, find, where to find it, but I don't want that to be the main focus um, for the image. Reduce that to 25. And then I usually put my blog URL. So I don't need to put all of this because it looks a bit messy. Um, I don't like it when links, my personal pet hate is when you've got a URL and it extends across multiple lines. It's irritating to read and people, it just looks messy, like this looks a bit messy, I need to fix that. Um, it, you need to just use just your blog URL address. So if you come up to the top, you can, just backspace out of that, I accidentally clicked on the image just this part here that I want so I've just left clicked and dragged to highlight all that then press control C to copy it and then come back over here 
click in your text section. I want to press enter because I want this to be on a new line and then press control V. So I need to reduce the size of this so my URL is all on the one line. See how it looks messy when it's on two lines? It's really irritating to read. So control A and then I want to reduce it down to 15 and I can expand it out a little bit by left clicking and dragging. Might make it 16. Yep. Okay, so now I've got my blog name and my blog URL. So now all that's left to do is add the little divider line between um, the title and my blog name. So if you go back to Elements, Shapes, I just used a rectangle and reduced it down to create a line. Oops, Control Z to undo if you make a mistake. And I'm going to change the color to black because that is obviously going to match and I can see it if it's not white. So I'm just going to zoom in because it's a little fat. I want to make it a bit thinner. Alrighty, so that's done. It looks pretty much exact same as what I made before. Um, so now what you can do is use this as a template and come back to Canva each time that you want to use it. So make sure you go File, Save. Canva does do automatic um, backups, but obviously save it before you close out of it. So when you're ready to use this on your blog, you just click Download, Image for Web JPEG, and it'll download. And then obviously rename it with your keywords for SEO, um, because when you create a new file in Canva, it, you might just call this blog post, or at the moment it's called how to organize recipes because it reads this first bit of text. But obviously I'd want to highlight that includes a free print, printable. Um, so make sure you include all your keywords and rename the image and then you can upload it to your blog. So when I want to use this again to create a new blog post, all I need to do is go to Canva and then find this template from where it's saved. It'll have all your design section and it'll show all of the things that you've made in Canva. You can just click on it and then go to the text menu, click in the text that you've already got in here and just type, um, press Control A and delete and then type in the new blog title that you want to use for the new blog post and just download. So it's a really quick way to make um, blog graphics and saves you a lot of time so you don't have to recreate it each time. All you need to do is update the text. I hope you found this video tutorial helpful.